Meyer and David Jones, get woke, go broke. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm Florian Heiser and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I hope you're having a good Saturday. I'm relaxing with my stein of coffee and avoiding housework as much as I can. So I thought we'd have a look at this article from news.com. This is written by uh, Frank Chung and it's really Jerry Harvey of Harvey Norman taking a swipe, a swipe at Maya and David Jones because, you know, they're claiming they're in a retail recession. Harvey Norman is doing a lot better but they have met their boardroom diversity quotas. So let's have a look. Is this a case of them getting woke and going broke? Jerry Harvey has unloaded on the politically correct obsession with boardroom gender quotas, saying struggling departments to rivals Meyer and David Jones score top marks for corporate governance, but we beat the S out of them. Well, probably did. The billionaire founder of Harvey Norman, which on Friday reported a 7.2% lift in full year profit to 402.3 million, despite falling Australian franchisee sales, said the market was very flat, but David Jones, South African owners were wrong to controversially declare the country was in a retail recession. The comments earlier this month by Woolworths Holding were met with scorn from JB Hi-Fi boss, boss Richard Murray, who countered that apartment stores were struggling for relevance. And now Mr. Harvey has weighed in with his own assessment. What do you think, guys? Do you think gender quotas have any place in the boardroom? Do you need to have more women up there in the boardroom to make a difference? Do you think your genitals actually makes a difference? Frankly, I think it, it will result in really undermining the achievements and success of women who have reached those positions. They'll just be seat fillers, even if they're not. That's how they'll be seen. He argued David Jones would today be a great retailer if he had purchased the company 20 years ago for his wife and current Harvey Norman boss, Katie Page. And its woes were a result of decades of revolving door CEOs and board members, most of whom have never sold a sock. Well, yeah, he's probably got a, he's probably got a good point there. You get these people in these C-level these and board-level positions that don't really have any, you know, ground experience. I need a shot of coffee there. Meyer and David Jones are two big department stores that are getting smaller and smaller every year, Mr. Harvey said. Then you look at what's happening to department stores in some other countries that are trading quite well. Look at the ownership and management of those companies. Why are they doing well and the Australian ones don't? Mr. Harvey, who owns 55% of the company's shares, hit out at activists pushing an agenda like the Australian Shareholders Association. The ASA led a first strike against the Harvey Norman board at last year's annual meeting after questioning the company's strategy and diversity of its board members, setting up a potential spill at this year's meeting. See, this is a problem. You've got these, these advocacy groups, essentially. Uh, I blame a lot of it out of the human resources sector human resources getting into these organizations and then pushing for these things to actually be doing something, to feel like they're leaving a legacy, to feel like they're achieving something. Because, I mean, pardon me, what else could you do in, in these positions? We're criticized for not having enough women on the board, not having enough independent directors, he said. There are lots of things they criticize us for. But the reality is over the years, the companies we're, we're talking about got much better marks for corporate governments and all those sorts of things, they're regarded as very good. We're regarded as very bad, and we beat the S out of them. Well, yeah, what, what matters to an investor? What matters to a company like this? It's not corporate governance. Oh, you want them to be, well, you don't want them to be dodging the books, but that's got nothing to do with women on the board, does it? Nothing at all. So, it's just PC politics, political correctness. Board members at David Jones and Meyer, in most cases, are not retailers at all. Mr. Harvey said, three women, five blokes, most independent, only one that not is the CEO, and he gets the sack. Mr. Harvey said, holy yes, and that's a good model. For someone like me looking at that, being told that's the model I should follow, are these people mad? Well, <laughs> yeah. Who do you trust more, guys? The Australian Shareholders Association, 
the Australian Shareholders Association, or Harvey Norman, or Jerry Harvey, sorry, from Harvey Norman. This, I really need to get my uh, Atlas, Atlas shrugged out and read this, because this is sounding very familiar, very familiar to some of the things that is going on in that book. It really is. It really is, with some of the organizations there. So, yeah, I'll dust it off. Don't worry, guys, I'll, I'm still reading it. I'll dust it off. But it shows you they're advocating for all this garbage. People are doing it and the business is going under and he's getting criticized. So it just shows you we, we go, what's happening. What's happening? He said there was absolutely no sense in it, but they're the one they're out there as a collective mob pushing this agenda. And that's wrong. I'm constantly getting letters from superannuation funds proxy advisors and the Australian Shareholders Association, all sorts of people all the time telling me I've got a problem, he said. Well, good on him for telling them to get stuffed. They're, they're, they've, the other retailers got the problem, not me. Why are they pushing this line? What is this motive? They don't give up, keep pushing the line. It's obviously all bliss. We're punished, they're not. They're regarded by the super funds as the place to invest because they tick the boxes. Why should a super fund? Okay, this is where your people are investing their super. We're, we're mandated by the state. We're forced to put our money in the super funds. And then they are making decisions based on irrelevant crap. Is there a super fund? Could someone let me know in the comment if there is a super fund that intentionally avoids political correct organizations? Because that might be an interesting one to shift into until you can afford to go self-managed. Because really, th this type of garbage, this corporate advocacy, and all this political correct rubbish and these quotas, I would, I would frankly want to avoid those type of businesses because it doesn't seem like a strength to me. It does not. Fundamentally, it seems like a waste of time. And they're going to get woke and they're going broke. So no boost from tax cuts. A weak local result. Oh, so this is interesting. He's thinking. He's saying opposite of the tax cut boost. So this will be interesting to get get Mr. Harvey's take on it because I have assumed that the at least the uh, lift up in, in what was it in consumer confidence, the little spike that we have there was the result of some tax cuts. But he's saying we didn't. So let's have a look. A weak local result for the homewares and electronics retailer was cushioned by its successful overseas operations, which Mr. Harvey ultimately wants to generate half of the company's profits from about one quarter currently. Total sales were up 12.1% to 2.23 billion, largely thanks to its 90 company operated offshore stores, breaking through the $2 billion sales barrier for the first time, with a 9.7% increase to 2.05 billion. The 11.7% rise in Harvey Norman's overseas profitability to 129.7 million, offset a 2.3% decline in revenue received from the company's 195 franchised Australian complexes. So could that, could that, could that be to do, you know, the profitability of these offshore companies? Could it be to do with the decline in the Australian dollar, perhaps? The Australian dollar is starting to go down. So the profitability when you flip the money over to the Aussie dollar is improved. Perhaps. Revenue from local franchisees was 944 million for the year, with total franchisee sales down by 1.8% to 5.66 billion amid a housing market downturn. The second half was particularly tough, with fourth quarter aggregate comparable sales for franchisees dropping by 1.6% for a full year, comparable sales decline of 0.9%. Harvey Norman announced a 173.4 million capital raising to manage debt, but still increased its final dividend by 3% to a fully franked 21 cents. Shares in the company dropped by 1.82% to 4.5, oh, sorry, $4.58 by just after midday, still 25% higher than $3.66 a year ago. The company has begun replicating its successful overseas premium store format in Australia and New Zealand, with a refit underway at the company's Cairns franchise complex, while refits at franchise complex in Campbelldown, Balagola, Purston, and Aspley will start post-Christmas. 
Harvey Norman intends to grow its international footprint with up to 21 new stores overseas within the next two years, including 17 alone in Singapore and Malaysia. Overseas revenue has now increased by 48% over the last five years, and profitability has nearly quadrupled. Despite the current weak environment, Mr. Harvey stressed Harvey Norman had made 2.6 billion profit over the past five years. If I told you I was unhappy with that, you'd want to know <laughs> where I was being certified, he said. We're one of the most successful retailers in Australian history. Harvey Norman said local franchisees had nonetheless continued to invest in their operations in anticipation of federal government tax cuts, stabilizing house prices and an increase in lending by banks for mortgages and small business loans. But Mr. Harvey was lukewarm on the tax cut so far, saying he'd, he hadn't seen a big impact. I don't know. All the feedback is no. We thought it would be a bit like a stimulus, he said, adding that sales in July and August were higher than this time last year. But why are you saying no when sales are higher? I, I don't know. I expected our sales to be flat, but they're actually better than I thought they might be. If they had been flat, I wouldn't have been surprised because just getting last year's figures is hard enough in this environment. So it shows you just meeting what he achieved last year is difficult enough. Asked if the government needed to do more to stimulate the economy, Mr. Harvey said, there's an argument that they should and another argument that they shouldn't. We haven't had a recession for over 30 years. There's an argument that a recession wouldn't necessarily be all that bad in some ways. I don't want a recession. I'm just saying economies over the years seem to be able to survive only on the basis of booms and busts, he said. Low interest rates are not particularly working now. Uh, they're talking about quantitative easing. Where is it all going? We haven't got a recession. We've got an economy that's a bit flat. We've got a whole heap of people that don't know how to fix it. Well, that's an interesting take. I think we'll head for a recession. But he is right. We've got a whole lot of people that are trying to do everything they can to fix it. Maybe, maybe we just need the recession to clean out some of the dead wood. Guys, let me know what you think. Do you think David Jones and Maya are getting work and going broke? Would you want your superannuation invested in companies that put a, you know, ensure they're meeting gender quotas on their boards? Do you think that would make any difference? I think it, frankly, seems like a distraction to real business. Let me know what you all think. Take care, everyone. Have a good weekend. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye for now.